Finishing off neuroradiology, just going over a little quick review of some OR cases that you might see, and I'm sure you've done most of these or seen some of them anyway in your OR clinical experience. Um, so kyphoplasty is when um, they're going to take a balloon catheter and expand it into a compressed vertebrae to get it close to near its height, and then they're going to inject um, bone cement. So it's helpful for patients that are experiencing kyphosis um, that have these um, compression fractures. And so if you take regular x-rays, um, you might see this cement into um, the vertebrae, and that's what that is. And so compression fractures are very painful for patients, um, typically caused um, by losing bone mass or osteoporosis, which is part of the aging process, right? But as um, this compression fracture gets worse, it com becomes into a sort of a wedge shape. And then they start to use, lose some stability there and um, hunch forward and it's very painful for them. It could result from a fall, something simple as a cough, uh, lifting a heavy object. Um, sometimes it doesn't take much for them to um, get a compression fracture. The vertebral plasty is really essentially um, close to the kyphoplasty. It just doesn't use a balloon. So the cement is injected directly into the vertebrae um, to help for um, the compression fractures or breaks or cracks or things like that. Um, so the cement will stabilize the fractures and support the spine. So only difference, no balloon. Uh, ACDF, which you guys have probably seen um, at our site is that anterior cervical discectomy infusion. So they're going to remove the herniated disc in the neck and fuse it. Um, so a lot of times the patients are having arm pain or numbness. Um, there might be a disc herniation in the cervical spine, things like that. Um, or it could be from fracture, but they're going to enter um, the incision anteriorly on the throat and to go in and remove the disc and they're going to place a graft plates and screws for the fusion to secure it. Um, most of the time you would be in a lateral position if you're using C-arm for this. They may do an AP at the end, um, but most often it would be a lateral. And then for us, they come in, I think it's um, within six weeks for AP and lateral, or, and again at three months to um, check the fusion. Here we have the T-LIF, uh, which is the transferaminal lumbar interbody fusion which is a posterior approach to the lumbar uh, spine. There's a bone graft that's taken from the patient's iliac crest. Um, there's a spacer and an interbody cage that's filled with that bone graft to maintain the disc height. And then the pedicle screws, we go into the pedicles, um, are placed. This is um, helpful for that spondylolisthesis, so that um, forward slipping that we might see. Um, or degenerative disc herniations, um, or sorry, degenerative disc disease or recurrent herniations. The goal is to eliminate the disc as sort of the source of pain. Um, so this one is the one that involves the pedicle screws. And this is the one that's a little bit difficult to go AP and lateral because their screws are sticking out of those pedicles. Um, the laminectomy, you just remember this ectomy term means removing something. So the laminectomy is the surgery that creates space uh, by removing bone spurs. Um, it tends to remove one piece of the lamina, but it could be all of the lamina, uh, depending on the severity. And then that uh, enlarges the spinal canal and relieves some pressure on the spinal cord or nerves. The discectomy, again, back to your medical terminology, is the surgical removal of abnormal disc material. Um, so they're going to remove a portion of the intervertebral disc, uh, preferably the area that's causing pain or weakness or numbness. Um, sometimes part of the bone also has to be removed depending on the placement of it. Spinal cord stimulator. Uh, you've probably seen these with uh, over in chestnut with the C-arm, but it's an implanted device that sends the low levels of electricity directly to the spinal cord, and this is for pain relief. The electrodes are placed uh, between the spinal cord and the vertebrae, so in the epidural space. And then the generator is placed um, just underneath the skin near their buttocks most often. And the patient is awake for this, right? And the rep will be in the room. And they'll test the different levels of the electrodes to see if they're getting pain relief. 
the odontoid pinning, this one is um, often difficult to set up because this uh, for us usually requires the two C-arms. Um, it's a screw being placed in the odontoid for odontoid fractures, which I think are very difficult. Um, so I think the setup process, one is in lateral position and one is your AP, and then you have to run both C-arms. So that can always, um, that can get a little bit tricky. Cross table spine work. So your uh, surgeons that aren't using a C-arm during their um, surgery may just need you to come in and do a cross table spine <clears throat> to um, determine what level vertebrae they're at. So they may just need a check. They don't need a C-arm for the rest of the case. Um, so it'll be a cross table lumbar spine or a cross table cervical spine and you'll use your portable machine. I think it's helpful to find out, A, what level are you going to, and that should be on your OR schedule. And then the patient's height and weight, the technologist can look that up on the um, power chart if you need to, just to get an idea of um, sort of patient body habitus. And then just be aware of your sterile fields, uh, watch out for anything blue, and just be aware of your distance uh, with your portable machine to those sterile, sterile fields. Um, but that pretty much rounds out neuro stuff. Um, the myelogram is what's really specified on the ERT list, uh, but spine uh, anatomy is definitely going to be on there as well. So that wraps up neuro.